Okay, so uh, taking a look at sequences, let's just see who's awake here. Hopefully this is a, a nice gentle introduction. What's the next number? Sorry? 256 is correct. Did you guys ever do those intelligence tests in elementary school where they ask you this kind of stuff? No. Oh, then maybe they don't do that anymore. Okay. Um, next one? Eight. Next one? Good, 625, yeah. And uh, one third or 0.33. Okay, so how do you do it? Those of you who are doing it so quickly, how did you figure out what uh, the missing value was for all those? Find the pattern. Find the pattern. Can you describe what happened in each of those for a pattern? Like, what's the first one up here? What's the pattern? Say? Yep. Yeah. So we multiplied by four. What about this one? Use a word that starts with M. Yeah, multiply by half. So you could say divide by 2, but for our unit, it's going to be better to think of it as multiplication. Okay? So you're right about dividing by 2, but better to think multiplication for what we're going to do. Next one? Yeah, times by 5. And finally? Don't say divide. Multiply by a third. Good. Okay. So the rule that we're using um, to find the missing value is that there is multiplication by a constant. And that's what makes up a geometric sequence. So when you hear that word, um, hang on a sec, multiplication by a constant. So when you hear that term geometric sequence, you can guarantee that that's the rule. You'll always be multiplying by a constant. It's not like they're going to trick you and halfway through they'll switch numbers or do something funny. Term by term, they're all multiplied by the same value. Okay? Um, so the rule... Uh, Sorry, if you haven't noticed, I've got a little less space to work on, so I had to zoom in. But uh, uh, the rule that I'm talking about, we refer to those as the common ratio. Okay, so in, in uh, geometric sequence, you're going to hear that term used. It's common ratio that we... Uh, that we're working on. Maybe I'll zoom out a little bit. It's a little squished. Can we still read that? You're young, right? You can read that, okay? Okay. If I need more room, then I'll maybe I'll zoom in. Uh, okay. So, common ratio, um, important term. And this is a key idea that you need to uh, remember. Okay. What does this mean? Well, let me show you back in the previous examples. Any number in the sequence divided by the previous number, so 16, 4 divided by 16, that's 4. 4 divided by 1, that's 4. If I go down to maybe the third sequence, 125 divided by 25, that's 5. Does not matter where you pick the terms, any term divided by the previous gets you the common ratio. Okay, so whatever is most convenient for you. For example, this is pretty convenient to do. 1 divided by 3, you don't even have to reduce. Whereas this is still going to be the common ratio, but it's going to need some reducing fractions and stuff before you get your answer. Okay, any two terms will do it for you. So here's where we'd like to be headed. Can you find the 30th term in this sequence? Now I realize that you'll probably say, oh yeah, no problem, Mr. Joyce. Let me get my calculator out here. And let me hit, where's my calculator? It's not funny if I do. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so you'll get your calculator out and you'll go... Uh, 4, 10, 25, you'll figure out I'm multiplying by 2.5, and you'll go 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and all the way up until you hit 30, right? We want to do it smarter than that, though, obviously. So what we're going to do is um, try to work out the pattern, okay? So we've already said that the common ratio is 2.5, okay? So let's figure out some more terms in this sequence. Okay. So what's the next term after 25? 37, keep going. What? Five. 0. 0.5? Did you just <laughs> do that in your head? It's actually uh, a little more than that, Ming. I like that you have a calculator right in front of you, and you'd rather try to do it in your head. That's, I admire that. 62.5. 62. 62. <laughs> there you go. Redemption. Okay. Anybody else want some free brownie points? Sorry, DJ? Yep, that sounds right. 
And last one. Roger, what do you think? How come I can never get students to take notes when it's really simple? <laughs> the simpler it is, the less attention I get. It's true, I know. Yes, Rod? 490? 390.625? Okay, that looks right. So, to help us find the pattern, these are the numbers, but to help us find the pattern, it's usually easier to think about what we're doing. So, the first term is the first term. There is no change. We're given the first term. But, to get to the next term, I have to multiply by the common ratio of 2.5. Okay, one multiplication. How many multiplications have happened to get to the third term? Two of them. One here, one more the next time I move over. So that's 4 times 2.5 squared. Okay? Now, shocking predictions. It's cubed, right? I've done it three times. So if you can find the pattern in this, then you can tell me what the 30th term is. You can come up with a little formula for it. So, who's brave here? What's the formula going to look like? Awesome, Danny, go for it. Okay. Um, 4 times, four yep. times 2.5 to the power of 30 minus 1. 30 minus 1, also known as? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, yes, you're absolutely correct. Okay? So, uh, if we were to put this in the calculator now, we can get it in, whoops, we can get it in, I think, three or four keystrokes of that. So, 4 times 2.5 to the 29. So we end up with 1.39 times 10 to the 12th, which is plenty large. Okay. Plenty large is not an acceptable answer, by the way, on your tests. <laughs> so uh, the term formula looks like this. Term n is a r n minus 1, where a is the first term. R is the common ratio. Whoops, ratio. Um, N is the ter uh, term number. Uh, there's no T in number at last I checked. And TN is the value of the nth term. By the way, uh, even when you leave Johnson Heights and you end up in university, you know you're in a hardcore math class when the word nth appears. When you hear nth as an actual word, that means it's big time. So good news for you. This formula does appear on the formula sheet, so you do not need to memorize it. Okay? I will provide one for you on tests and quizzes. You'll probably use it enough that you won't even need the formula sheet, but it is provided. Okay? So now that we have a formula, let's see if we can... Um, we need to pull out the pieces. I'm going to assume that everybody is good enough to pick out A, the first term. Right? Like if I quickly went, Jasmine, what's the first term? Thank you. Okay, so you can do that. Let's find out common ratios though, okay? So you try it, see if you can come up with the common ratios there real quick. Okay, so uh, what's the common ratio for this one here, this first one? One fourth. So one way we could do this, a half divided by two, it's a quarter, okay? Um, this one, did anybody actually do this? Did anybody really feel like punishing themselves? Negative 1.5. Yeah, I would, <laughs> except I would pick those two numbers because then it's easier. I don't have to reduce that fraction. Negative 3 halves is fine, okay? So, what about the next one? Logarithms. Dun, 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 dun. You thought you got away with it, eh? We were done logs. Well, unfortunately, they're going to appear here and there. What's the common ratio in these? Is anyone brave enough to figure this out? How'd you do that? Just guessed? Yeah, it just hits them, you know? I've seen him write tests, and I don't know how he finishes them so quickly, but I guess sometimes you just, you look at the page, the answer just jumps <laughs> off at you, right? Can you explain to us how you did that? No? <laughs> well, incidentally, you're correct. It is three. Does anybody have any bright ideas? Sure, DJ. Move, move them to the front. That's right. But before we get there, we need, one, we need one simpler idea that we already talked about, which is up here in highlighting. Uh-oh. 
I know for some reason it doesn't really matter what it is. If I put a log into the question, everybody panics. Any term divided by the previous? So any term divided by the previous, let's take the middle two. Doesn't matter which ones I pick. Log x to the 9 divided by log x cubed. That's any term divided by its previous. So now, DJ, what do I want to do? Now I want to move them to the front. That's right. So the logs will cancel. And I end up with 3. OK? So in sequences and series, uh, they do tend to pop up along with uh, the logs a little bit here and there. So you will see them in some of the questions we do. Okay. So now uh, you should be experts at finding your common ratio and whatnot. Find me the 12th term of those two on your own. And I'll, uh, I'll pause our video here for a minute. Okay, so um, I assume most of you have the first one done. There, that should be a 12 there. So this is uh, 6 times 3 to the 11th. Okay, um, one thing, be careful. Sometimes if you go too quickly, this is what I see when I mark over your quizzes and homework, is that you put 12 in the same spot there. Remember, to get to term 12, you only have to multiply 11 times. So it should actually be a minus 1 there. Be careful with that. Um, in this one, term 12 will be 81. Um, let's go 24 over 36. And since I'm just looking for the answer, I don't really need to simplify that. I'll just put it in my calculator the same way. And I get... Uh, 0 0.9364426155. Okay. Questions? How do we like sequences so far? Yeah? No? Okay. <laughs> so another thing that we're gonna need to do with sequences, this goes up the difficulty one rung, one one more. There's only like one more step up higher after this one. Uh, we need to figure out what term numbers each of these sequences represent. Okay, so if this is what we had for our question, then what would the term number 92, 192 be? Okay. To do this, we actually have a little exponential equation to solve. So if I know 192 is the last one, then what's the common ratio here? You see it? 2 is the common ratio. Then this is the equation that I'm trying to solve for n. Okay. So we could do it with logs, um, or we could also do it the way we have with other exponential equations, which is to make a common base. So um, let's divide it by negative 6 on both sides. And I'll get 32 equals 2 to the n minus 1. And here's one version. I could go 2 to the 5 equals 2 to the n minus 1. So n equals 6. The other version, of course, would be to use logs. Maybe you really like them by now. And you say log base 2 of 32 equals n minus 1. 5 equals n minus 1. N equals 6. Okay. You could do it either way, using logs or just an exponential equation. Up to you. Okay, so I'll let you uh, try solving the next one either way.